Today's lecture is based on the principles and practices of community psychology. After my lecture is over, you will learn about the practices of community psychology. You will also come to know about the various principles of community psychology. You shall be able to identify when to use which practice and in what situation. You will also be able to evaluate the pros and cons of each principle and practice. Let me give you an introduction to community psychology to begin with. Community psychology represents a new way of thinking about people's behavior and well-being in the context of all the community environments and social systems in which they live their lives. Our intention is to develop that way of thinking and to show how the perspective is applicable to a very wide range of contemporary problems. One of the most exciting aspects of community psychology is that the field is still developing and defining itself. It is not easily reduced to the traditional sub-disciplines in psychology for several reasons. First, community psychologists simultaneously emphasize both applied service delivery to the community and theory-based research. Second, they focus not just on individual psychological makeup but also on multiple levels of analysis. These levels of analysis range from the individuals and groups to specific programs and to organizations and finally to whole communities. Third, community psychology covers a broad range of settings and substantive areas. A community psychologist might find herself or himself conducting research in a mental health center on Monday, appearing as an expert witness in a courtroom on Tuesday, evaluating a hospital program on Wednesday, implementing a school-based program on Thursday, and organizing a neighborhood association meeting on Friday. For all the above reasons, there is a sense of vibrant urgency and uniqueness among community psychologists, as if they are as much a part of a social movement as of a professional or a scientific field. The new and disparate area of community psychology are thus bound together by a singular vision and that is of helping the relatively powerless in and out of institutions take control over their environment and their lives. Community psychologists must, however, wear many hats in working towards the creation of social systems which 1. Promote individual growth and prevent social and mental health problems before they actually start. 2. Provide immediate and appropriate forms of intervention when and where they are most needed and 3. Enable those who have been labelled as deviant to live as dignified, supported and empowered lives as far as possible, preferably as contributing members of the community. So far I have told you what is community psychology. It may be useful to describe community psychology by distinguishing it from other disciplines with which it is closely allied. As I will explain in more detail, community psychology is like public health in promoting healthy environments and lifestyles. In considering problems at the population not just the individual level and especially 
in adopting preventive orientation. That is, community psychologists try to prevent problems before they start, rather than waiting for them to become serious and debilitating. But community psychology differs from public health in its concern with social and mental as well as physical health and the quality of life in general. In many ways, community psychology is like social work, except that it has a strong research orientation. Community psychologists are committed to the notion that nothing is more practical than the rigorous, well-conceived research directed at social problems. Community psychology is like social psychology and sociology in taking a group or systems approach to human behavior. But it is more unabashedly applied than those disciplines and more concerned with using psychological knowledge to resolve social problems. Of course, it borrows techniques from industrial and organizational psychology, but tends to deal with community organizations, human service delivery systems, and support networks. Plus, it focuses simultaneously on the problems of the clients and workers as opposed to solely the goals and values of management. It is concerned with issues of social regulation and control and with enhancing the positive characteristics and coping abilities of relatively powerless social groups such as the poor, the minorities, the children, elderly or could be women as well. Let's move on to the principles of community psychology. Community psychology favors critical perspectives on knowledge creation and truth claims, recognizing that what is regarded as legitimate knowledge is often context specific and inevitably colored by the social and cultural positions of the knower. Experiential knowledge is valued along with knowledge derived from empirical studies. Thus, community psychology research employs a wide range of methodologies, the choice of method being determined by the particular context and issue being addressed. Community psychology is a multi-level in that it recognizes the limitations and potentially victim-blaming nature of individually focused interventions, favoring instead groups, community and societal interventions which address the structural factors maintaining oppression and suboptimal health. Community psychology pays particular attention to process, valuing bottom-up, inclusive and collaborative ways of working over top-down solutions to problems imposed by political elites. Community psychology also emphasizes ecological thinking, which leads us beyond trying to change individuals to consider ways to improve the fit or interaction between persons and environments, which can have an important effect on behavior and well-being as each factor has separately. The ecological viewpoint requires a concern with the relationship of individuals to each other in a community as a differentiated social groupings with a very elaborate systems of formal and informal relationships. The community perspective includes a focus on broader ecological levels than the level of exclusive treatment of the individual. Community psychology directs attention to the larger context within which plans are developed and implemented. The possibilities for gaining resources must be carefully evaluated. The political climate supporting one type of programming at one time 
and another at another time must be understood. What is feasible at one time and under one set of political and economic conditions may often be approached only with great difficulty at another time and under other circumstances. Competition among agencies and groups for the same pool of limited resources becomes a crucial factor influencing what kinds and amounts of resources will be available and to whom. When we adopt the community perspective, our professional concerns necessarily broaden. Let us not talk about the practices of community psychology. Community psychology is not only a profession and a scientific discipline, it is also a philosophical or value orientation that is applicable to virtually any field or profession. The community perspective challenges traditional modes of thought. Number one, it avoids blaming the victim for problems or labeling people as deviant and looks at whole ecological systems, including the political, cultural and environmental influences, as well as focusing on institutional and organizational factors. Number two, acknowledging that many groups and individuals are suspicious of or intimidated by professionals, the community approach encourages client citizen participation and recognizes the demand for local empowerment, bureaucratic decentralization and self-help or mutual aid. It simultaneously stresses the utility of research not only for theory development but for program evaluation and policy analysis and the omnipresence of values both implicitly and explicitly throughout the society and even science. An important aspect of community orientation is its appreciation of the authority of historical and structural contexts. Community psychology values and celebrates cultural diversity. Community psychology also attempts to enable psychologists to number one, accurately, effectively and ethically select, administer, score, interpret and communicate findings of appropriate assessment methods informed by accepted psychometric standards and sensitive to the diverse characteristics and needs of clients. Number two, select, implement and evaluate psychological interventions consistent with current ethical evidence-based and professional standards within a theoretical framework and with sensitivity to the interpersonal processes of the therapeutic relationship and the diverse characteristics and needs of clients, analyze the complexity and multidimensionality of human diversity and demonstrate the knowledge, skills and attitudes necessary to understand the diverse worldviews and the potential meaning of social, cultural and individual differences for professional psychological services. Next, I'm going to talk about case studies. A case study involves an up-close, in-depth and detailed examination of a subject or the one we call the case, as well as its related contextual conditions. Case studies appear with great frequency throughout popular works with nearly anybody able to claim to have done one. Case studies also can be produced by following a formal research method. These case studies are likely to appear in formal research venues such as the journals and professional conferences rather than popular works. The resulting body of case study research has long had a prominent place in many disciplines and professions ranging from psychology, anthropology, sociology and political science to education, clinical science, 
social work and administrative science. In doing case study research, the case being studied may be an individual or could be an organization, an event, action existing in a specific time and place. For instance, clinical science has produced both well-known case studies of individuals and also case studies of clinical practices. However, when case is used in an abstract sense as in a claim, a proposition or an argument, such a case can be the subject of many research methods, not just case study research. Thomas offers the following definition of case study. Case studies are analysis of persons, events, decisions, periods, projects, policies, institutions or other systems that are studied holistically by one or more method. The case that is the subject of the inquiry will be an instance of a class of phenomena that provides an analytical frame which would be an object within which the study is conducted and which the case illuminates and explicates. According to Cresswell, data collection in case study occurs over a sustained period of time. One approach sees the case study defined as a research strategy, an empirical inquiry which investigates a phenomenon within its real life context. Case study research can mean single and multiple case studies, can include quantitative evidence, relies on multiple sources of evidence and benefits from the prior development of theoretical propositions. As such, case study research should not be confused with qualitative research as case studies can be based on any mix of quantitative and qualitative data. Similarly, each single subject research might be taken as a case study of a sort, except that the repeated trials in a single subject research permits the use of experimental designs that would not be possible in typical case studies. At the same time, the repeated trials can provide a statistical framework for making inferences from quantitative data. Let me give you case study one in community psychology, which is reclaiming social justice by Isaac Pelensky and Geoffrey Nelson. This study describes the basic principles guiding the values of community psychology. It discusses how community psychology's values have evolved over time. According to this study, community psychology points out the lack of attention to the value of social justice and attempts to provide ways to reform existing social structures. It does so without attempting to change status quo of social justice, but tries to point out that one cannot eliminate oppression without transforming oppressive institutions and altering the basic premises of unjust system. Let's go on to case study two, which is community psychology perspectives on social capital theory and community development. This is given by Douglas T. Perkins, Joseph Hugi, and Paul W. Speer. According to this study, community psychology can inform community development practice by reframing social capital theory. Social capital is generally defined and measured at the interpersonal, community, institutional or societal levels in terms of networks, which could be bridging, and norms of reciprocity and trust bonding within those networks. Social capital should be analyzed in a multi-level ecological framework in terms of both individual psychological and behavioral conceptions, 
which could be sense of community, collective efficacy or empowerment, neighboring and citizen participation and institutional and community network level conceptions. According to this study, excessive social cohesion disempowers the community because it seriously undermines the members ability to engage in conflict. Ways to increasing learning, power and access should be emphasized rather than social cohesion. Psychological and behavioral studies point to factors that motivate individuals to engage in building social capital and methods to maintain and empower that engagement. Moving on to case study 3, which is the concepts of social justice and community psychology towards a social ecological epistemology by Mark R. Founder Caro and Daring Weinberg. This paper addresses the pervasive tendency in community psychology to treat values like social justice only as general objectives rather than contested theoretical concepts possessing identifiable empirical content. It discusses the concept of social justice in three major traditions within community psychology, which are the prevention and health promotion tradition, the empowerment tradition and the critical tradition. More specifically, it points to a pressing need in community psychology for an epistemology that subsumes both descriptive and evaluative concepts, acknowledges its own embeddedness in history and culture without thereby reducing all knowledge claims to the status of ideology. Finally, it describes and demonstrates the premise that what theorists are calling a social ecological epistemology for fulfilling this need. Moving on to case study 4, speaking for ourselves, Feminist Methods and Community Psychology by Lisa Cosgrove and Maureen C. McHugh. Although feminist and community psychology share a number of epistemological and methodological perspectives that guide their respective theories and research practices, it has been argued that community psychology has not fully integrated a feminist perspective into its discipline. This paper examines how community psychology and feminist research methods might combine to help us better understand women's experiences without essentializing or universalizing those experiences. The authors offer a series of suggested directions for feminist research that may also prove promising for community psychology. Particular attention is paid to feminist social constructionist approaches in so far as they address the complex relationship between epistemology and methodology. Let me summarize my lecture. Community psychology represents a new way of thinking about people's behavior and well-being in the context of all community environments and social systems in which they live their lives. The intention is to develop that way of thinking and to show how the perspective is applicable to a very wide range of contemporary problems. Community psychology studies the individual's context within communities and the wider society and the relationship of the individual to communities and to the society. Experiential knowledge is valued along with knowledge derived from empirical studies. Community psychology is multi-level in that it recognizes the limitations and potential victim blaming nature of individually focused interventions, favoring instead group community and societal interventions which address the structural factors maintaining oppression and suboptimal health. 
it avoids blaming the victim for problems or labeling the people as deviant. It stresses the utility of research not only for theory development but for program evaluation and policy analysis. Community psychology values and celebrates cultural diversity. Community psychology also attempts to enable psychologists to accurately, effectively and ethically select, administer, score, interpret and communicate findings of appropriate assessment methods. Case studies are analysis of persons, events, decisions, periods, projects, policies, institutions or other systems that are studied holistically by one or more method. The case that is the subject of the inquiry will be the instance of a class of phenomena that provide an analytical frame an object within which the study is conducted and which the case illuminates and explicates.